Okay, so this is a year that is likely to become an El Nino year. And many people associate El Nino years with bad years, years of disasters, years of drought. The truth is that El Nino years, or in an El Nino year, you have winners and losers. I'm especially interested in the agricultural sector and, and food security issues. And for example, in an El Nino year, uh, you have an increased chance of having droughts or, or dry conditions in Australia. That, that affects, for example, the amount of wheat that is going to be in the international market uh, and affects the prices of wheat. Uh, it also has an increase, uh, it means increased chances of dry conditions in Indonesia, problems with fires, problems for small farmers in Indonesia. But at the same time, it means uh, high chances of good rainfall, say for summer crops in Southeast South America. So you have places like Paraguay, Argentina, Uruguay, where the summer crops are likely to be good. You have more than uh, normal rainfall in those seasons. It's also complicated because, for example, let's take the, the case of Southeast South America, specifically Uruguay. Uh, for s winter crops like wheat, if you get a very wet spring, that means that, of course, water will not be limiting the wheat yields, but it may increase disease problems, fungi problems. You have higher humidity, higher temperatures. And, and so the, the, the key message here is uh, an El Nino year doesn't mean one thing. It means many different things. And it means for sure impacts on the international stocks of uh, food. Now, that doesn't mean there are negative impacts on the international stocks. For example, an El Nino year may mean, yes, less Australian wheat in the market, but it may also mean more Argentinian wheat in the market. Um, it, it may also mean, for example, pro social problems in Northeast Brazil, where the likelihood of drought is increased in the Nino years. But it may mean great uh, harvest of summer crops in Paraguay or Uruguay. Uh, 